Hello students, uh, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Kulbhushan Chandel from Himachal Pradesh University, Shimla. Today, we are going to talk on module Adapting Marketing to New Liberalized Economy from Paper Marketing Management. Let me discuss that uh, what we are going to learn from this very module. We will be understanding the concepts of adapting marketing practices to new liberalized economy. Uh, we will be focusing on the needs of liberalized economy. We will be describing the importance of marketing practices to new liberalized economies. We will be defining the need of changing marketing practices as per the liberalized economy. Uh, the Indian economy had been undergone through a controlled regime for a long time when the marketing distribution, industrial production and prices were governed by the government. During the last few years, a drastic changes have taken place in the policies of the government which resulted in the removal of the controls and opening up of the Indian economy to the world economy. Uh, liberalization uh, and globalization have uh, brought a dynamic changes in the economic environment of uh, the country. Today, companies need to think on how to operate and compete in the new economy. For example, uh, Docomo is quickly gaining experience by providing superior services uh, customer to customers. Now businesses have to quickly anticipate as well as uh, respond according to the emerging customer's needs and uh, expectations. Uh, the internet and other technologies used to satisfy that their needs. Uh, due to changes in the technologies, uh, set of beliefs uh, that shows the major businesses to adopt changes in uh, beliefs uh, in the old economy and turn these beliefs into the new economy. All companies need to retain skill and competencies gained in the past but also they have to uh, there is a need to add new knowledge and competencies to grow uh, and uh, prosper difference between old economy and new economy today's marketplace has following types of customers traditional customers these are those customers who do not buy online then the cyber customers, these are those who mostly buy online. Then the hybrid customers, who are the one who does the both, they also buy online and they are also not involved to buy online. For example, mostly customers are hybrid as they shop in grocery stores but occasionally order online. They buy books and novels in bookstores but order books from bn.com. Companies are required to adjust their marketing practices to meet these new conditions examined marketing practices in which companies and marketers are involved. For example, e-business websites and customer relationship management. The basic differences in the marketing practices in the old economy and in the new economy can be explained and understood as under. The old economy effect and the new economy effects can be understood with the help of following attributes which we take as a difference between two. The old economy is influenced by the product units, whereas new economy that is influenced by the customer segment. The old economy focuses on profitable transactions. The new economy 
focuses on lifetime customers. The old economy score, the financial scoreboard, a new economy score, marketing scoreboard. The new economy looking towards the shareholders, whereas the new economy is looking towards the stakeholders. The old economy, uh, in old economy aspects, the marketing aspects does not market marketing itself. And whereas uh, uh, in the new economy, uh, everyone does the marketing. In old economy, it creates brand through advertisements. Whereas in new economy, it creates the brand through performance. The old economy acquire customers. Whereas the new economy focus on customers retention. Uh, in old economy, no customer satisfaction measurement that is taken place and whereas in new economy, the measures of customer satisfactions, they are emphasized. Let me discuss drivers of new liberalized economy. Uh, many forces play an important role in reshaping world economy. Among them, technology is there. Uh, globalization and market re uh, deregulation plays a major role. The main drivers which have a great influence uh, on the marketing strategies in this new liberalized economy may be discussed uh, uh, say uh, like this that the digitalization and connectivity is there. Uh, much of the world's business is now carried through network that help in connecting people and the companies. For example, people within the company can be connected through internet, intranet, extranet connects a company with its suppliers uh, and uh, distributors and at last Intranet that connect uh, the users to the worldwide information uh, repository, uh, the companies interact with suppliers and consumers to buy and sell through internet. The global common activity is further developed through wireless communications, uh, consumers and business in Europe and Japan mainly involved in mobile commerce using such as uh, the docomo but the same business practices now they are used worldwide including india uh, this intermediations and uh, reintermediations as a result of the achievement of early online websites like aol amazon ebay snap deals etc have stuck terrors in the hearts of many established manufacturers and retailers. For example, Compaq sold its computers through retailers, whereas Dell computers, they are sold directly to the consumers, was able to grow faster by using internet to sell online. Many intermediaries like bookstores, music stores, Travel agents and stock brokers felt massive pressure on online uh, competitors emerged. Compact Barnes & Noble finally created their own internet sales channels and combination uh, of uh, offline and online operations to retain the loyalty of the retailers, brokers and agents. But some offline competitors, such as online channels, have become stronger than the pure dot com because they had a large pool of resources and have well established brand names. Customization and uh, customization. This means that uh, uh, the company's ability to provide differentiated products, services, prices, 
and delivery channels for each customer by online companies that make consumers to become self-producing uh, customers uh, who can uh, eventually design their own goods. Customizations may be uh, complicated to execute for products like automobiles that can increase cost what consumers are not uh, willing to pay. It is hard to repair customized products. On the other hand, uh, customization is well known for some products such as laptops, computers, skincare products and so on. Industry Convergence Pharmaceutical companies are now in a position to add uh, biogenetic research capacities in order to formulate new drugs, new cosmetics and new foods. Uh, film companies such as uh, Kodak uh, Chemical Company is now moving into electronics to uh, digitalize their image making capabilities. All these companies are recognizing many new opportunities present in the environment. The main marketing practices in new liberalized economy uh, can be understood with the help of following attributes. It focuses on e-business, the entrepreneur freedom that main over there. E-commerce has four major internet domains, selection of a distribution channel uh, that remain when we are just discussing the marketing practices in new liberalized economy, the pricing policy that is focused main, the communication that remain the center point with the help of advertisements and other factors or variables. Mastering in the procedural complexities that also remain our main points to understand the marketing practices in the new liberalized economy. FDI influences the investment that is, that is also taken care. The multinational companies in the Indian markets, uh, it also remain the one kind of focus area, the banking sectors the competition in insurance sectors, capital market, growth of financial market, uh, say the mutual funds and other financial sectors uh, aspects, they are just taken while studying or deciding the marketing practices in the new liberalized economy. E-business, the demand of business in today's world is e-business or computerization business houses. The internet helps the companies to conduct business faster, more accurately over a wider range of time and space at less cost and customize the customers offerings. Organizations are appreciative to set up websites and to distribute information and promote goods and services. The companies use intranet and extranet for communicating the information. When the information is to be communicated internally among the employees, intranet is used. And when the information is to be provided for the exchange of data, orders and payments among the supplier and distributors, extranet is used. Uh, there is no need of paper flows as now with computerization everyone can be linked through computers. E-commerce has four major internet domains. E-commerce is wider than e-business. That means that in addition to, to providing information about the company's history, policies, and job opportunities, e-commerce includes e-purchasing and e-marketing also. Company uses the internet to purchase goods and services efficiently from supplier through e-purchasing. E-marketing 
helps company to inform, communicate, promote, and to sell its products and services through the internet. The main domains of internet can be explained as such. It focuses on business to business consumers. It focuses on uh, business to business, which is also known as a B to B. Then the C to C, which is the consumer to consumers, the consumer to the business C to B. It also to make it focus on consumer to the business, business to consumers. The internet is most important for the consumer products, and the consumers generally buy books, music. Stock tradings, etc., online. As information regarding the features and prices of the products is also available online. Online business is not used for those products which need to be touched and examined in advance. However, products like computers, flowers, and even wine without seeing or trying are bought online business to business business to business websites makes market more efficient for business houses buyers which get goods by using business to business marketing are business houses they can visit various uh, sites spot exchange and online product catalogs and other online uh, resources for purchasing their business companies are also forming online buying alliances to get huge discounts from suppliers consumer to consumer means c to c with consumer to consumer consumer creates and join internet interest groups and chat rooms just to share information so that word of web joined with word of mouth has a buying influence like olex.com and many more such websites are also there. The consumer to business means C to B. Consumers feel trouble free for communicating with the companies online. The companies invite their customers email queries suggestions and even complaints even some companies have provided a call me button on their websites it is a consumer click on the that very particular button then automatically the call is transferred to the company's representatives who are available for answering phone calls moreover Consumers can also use sites like complaints and planetfeedbacks.com for satisfying themselves. Selection of distribution channels. It is very important decision to be taken regarding the choice of the right distribution channel. For this, a marketing agency is set up by the company which select importers and even the company can have its own branches in other states and foreign countries. The company can also operate through its subsidiary companies as the producer and the consumers are separated by a vast distance so the efficiency of distribution channel becomes essential in the marketing context. Efficient distribution alone can eliminate the effect of geographical separation, so selection of distribution channel becomes an important decision area in international marketing as well as Indian marketing. Pricing policy. The principles and techniques of determining pricing are the same as in both domestic and international marketing. Firms having a short-term interest in the markets may adopt 
cost plus pricing strategy, but firms with long term interests can adopt market oriented pricing policy. The firms must consider the prevalent conditions in each country and in each distinct uh, market segment and formulate suitable pricing policies. Even in some countries, government agencies function as sole buying and distribution agent. Communication In domestic marketing, a marketer symbol attracts and appeals to people who are better known to him using a known language, symbols and familiar media. But in international marketing, he has to face unfamiliar people, strange languages and imaginary uh, and uh, unfamiliar media having unfamiliar purchases and motivations. So those symbols and images should be used which could be understood by them and which appeals to them also. Mastering in the procedural complexities. The businessman is needed to have mastery in variety of procedural complexities covering a variety of areas like export, import license, customs and foreign exchange regulations relating to insurance of quality and packages. Foreign direct investment influences the investments. The various measures have led to jump in the flow of FDI into the domestic market. The inflow has influenced the investment pattern in several industries, the passenger car industry, the soft drink industry and the cosmetic and uh, personal care product industry have all been influenced strongly by the FDIs. Many experts believe that India has enough potential to attract foreign investments. Global companies usually consider market size, political stability and regulatory environment as the three factor for direct investment. Entrepreneurial freedom. The entrepreneurial freedom which was result of liberalization released the blocked up growth impulse of Indian industry and business. Delicensing of industries resulted in facilitation of uh, the entry of a number of new players into several industries. Many industries entered with the removal of hurdles of licensing. The major developments which took place as a result of the new entrepreneurial freedom are mergers, acquisitions and takeovers of the business houses and also diversification of business houses. Entrepreneurs now can easily raise capital from domestic as well as foreign capital markets. Freedom of entry and concessions motivate foreign investments. For example, merger of Dumduma, T Estates, KGF and Kisan into Group Bond, mergers of uh, QIL with Ponds, mergers of uh, Tamco with uh, HLL mergers of uh, Group Bond and Lipton into the BBLIL and merger of uh, BBLIL into the HLL Hindustan Labor Limited. Multinational companies in the Indian markets. The removal of uh, FERA restrictions and the liberalization of FDI enabled MNCs who were to operate in India and to raise their equity in their Indian enterprises. MNCs already in operation in India have been consolidating their position and many of them in alliance with an Indian partner and some fully owned subsidiaries. For example, Whirlpool, 
Corporation USA entered the Indian market by acquiring Calvinators India Limited, uh, Major Cosmetics, MERS as uh, L'Oreal, Avon, Amway and uh, Oriflame also set soaps. Uh, these food chains like McDonald's, then uh, Kentucky, Fried Chicken, Wimpy, Domino, uh, Kellogg's, etc. And so many examples are there. Banking sector. The banking sector also faced following changes due to liberalization in the economy. By losing the control of interest of rates on deposits permits banks to make differentiated offers. It decreases multiplicity of rates, enhances the customer orientation, automation of banking sector and play in the competitive game while continuing with the constraints of public sector existence. Also, adjust to new norms of capital adequacy and also to restructure organizations, operations, and system banking is to computerize and uh, interconnect the branches without this and to improve productivity and profitability. Competition in insurance sector. IRDA has issued licenses for carrying on uh, the insurance business. Some of them are HDFC Standard Life Insurance Company Limited, Royal Sundram Alliance Company Limited, ICICI Prudential Life Insurance Company Limited, Max New York Life Insurance Company Limited, IFCO Tokyo. General Insurance Company Limited, SBI Life Insurance Company, Villa Sun uh, Life uh, Insurance Company, Capital Market. The main components of financial sectors, that is, capital market and the banking sector, have undergone drastic changes due to opening of the capital markets to foreign institutional investors and foreign portfolio investments in uh, Indian companies, the capital market has undergone for reaching changes. For example, Unit Trust of India, IDBI, ICSI, IFCI, Credit Capital Finance Corporation may be the example of uh, these happenings. And then the financial services, a new crop of uh, financial services emerged and financial services became attractive new uh, business uh, propositions uh, for the firms. Services such as venture capital finance, corporate advisory service, forex advisory service, international finance management, advisory service to MNCs, entering India and research and analysis support to FIIs coming to India. Growth of private mutual fund. Due to liberalization, the rapid growth of private mutual fund has been an important development. Earlier, mutual funds were in the hands of public sector and they were operating in the country under public sector. Private sector enters the mutual fund and portfolio management schemes shows the quick launch of access of private mutual fund. A number of firms in the private sectors such as Kothari Group, Apple Industries, Tata Villa, Kodak Mahindra, CAT Financial Services, Reliance Capital, etc. started their mutual funds. Marketing Challenges of Liberalized Economy it can be understood with the help of following factors which make the changes and uh, put the challenges, marketing challenges uh, due to the liberalized economy. It may be understood by 
taking into the considerations the changes due to the liberalizations, the entrepreneurial freedom, the compulsions to become price competitive and compulsion to grow, changes due to liberalization. Indian marketing segment has been facing many drastic changes of uh, late as a consequence of the liberalization policy. The freedom offered by liberalization has given an impulsion to start many new businesses and industries. Uh, there has been a um, uh, mass of mergers and acquisitions, takeovers and amalgamations. For example, Unilever merged many of its units in India like Brook Bond, Lipton, Kisan, Ponds, etc. into Hindustan Lever Limited. Policy changes have helped to bring a steady flow of foreign direct investment into, into the Indian market. Many global investors are waiting the further reforms in Indian economy to enter the market in a big way in the near future. Many multinational companies have entered the Indian market after liberalizations. Major MNCs which are active in India are General Motors, Ford, Hyundai, Honda City, uh, Honda itself, the Whirlpool, the Samsung, the LG, IBM, uh, Domino's, uh, say, uh, etc., and so on. So many other uh, multinationals are which are uh, working here and which are eyeing upon on an Indo Indian market. Indian companies are now facing the marketing challenges of liberalized economy, uh, where the survival of the fittest is the order of the day. Marketers have to gear up to face the challenges of highly competitive market scenario. Only those companies will survive, will be surviving in the market which have the necessary marketing strengths and capabilities. The consumers are becoming more knowledgeable and are more demanding, making companies to consider them with more respect to gain and retain their loyalty towards their products. Entrepreneurial freedom. Indian industry and businesses would be having a comfortable and a great time, but the entrepreneurial freedom did help the entrepreneurs to enter industries of their choice uh, but for some of the existing players, the new freedom implied uh, destabilizations too. Uh, their market, market share and profit came under great pressure. Uh, for example, the Milk Food Limited, after almost strong position in uh, dairy industry in northern India, uh, milk food items uh, limited found itself in trouble following the delicensing of the industry. With the removal of the licensing barriers, many new firms entered the industry in quick succession. Milk food limited suddenly found itself in great danger due to an excess of new competitors. Uh, the very same people who were supplying milk to the company uh, earlier now became its competitors. Milk Food Limited not only found itself surrounded by the new competitions, but also had to struggle to obtain its daily supplies of raw material millet now become uh, who became the producers. Uh, there was now a scarcity of the raw material resulting in uh, shaping up uh, or sharpening up uh, its prices. Milk food could not face uh, destabilization. Compulsions to become price competitive. 
there was shortage in every sector like consumer goods industrial goods and services it was basically a case of production not being increased to meet the growing demand there were many reasons like many companies were going on with old plants and unable to increase production many others could not increase production due to licensing restrictions and also some manufacturers vested with interest in shortages deliberately promoted the wastages creating artificial sacrifices or scarcities there was little stress on cost reduction technological uh, upgradations and improvement of quality and customer convenience compulsion to grow the indian business firms are compelled to take to exports today's world is based on technology that has emerged as a crucial resource for business firms with globalization technology has emerged as a vital factor for indian firms too consumers perception regarding products is uncertain in addition to the opportunity technology encompasses a threat technological change makes products and business suddenly absolute or out of fashion so the students let's now summarize what we have learnt in this module we have learnt uh, many things the above for going uh, uh, discussion reveals the immensity of uh, the change takes place or taking place in the business or marketing environment of indian economy on the account of liberalization the massive changes takes place in the environment has thrown up a series of marketing challenges for business firms operating in india technology has the competitive advantages uh, and the core competence for uh, competing su successfully firm needs competitive advantages and more competences the technology strength can make their firm uh, enjoy sustainable competitive advantages and core competences mnc's were scoring over the indian firms largely because of their products and brands uh, behind their products and brands was their core competence Uh, indian firms to have to acquire uh, such more competences and that can that depends on the technological strength of india companies indian firms want to compete they have to compete in global market if they do uh, wish so and has to equip themselves with core competences and technological stance the challenge on the technology front of indian firms is actually twofold first they know how a compulsion to acquire parity with global firms the second is that as the indian firms recommended a new development is compounded the task in recent times technology has started changing very rapidly becoming too intense and rapid to adjust with it but the firms have no escape they have to cope with the changes in order to survive and this is the reality the crux of the new challenge they face in the, on the part of the technology itself the new trade policy gave chance to the indian business firms to earn for an exchange that is required for importing whatever the raw material spare parts and components they needed uh, of for keeping their production line on going uh, once the new policy came into the existence every company knocked at the export market reliance europe uh, isr uh, world trade uh, seat and uh, 
fair growth, uh, exams, were among the newcomers. The interesting point is that while capacity addition were visualized as a tool for gaining a cost advantage for fighting competition, the very enlargement of capacity create, created new competitions with the heat of competition in the domestic market enhanced firms had to naturally turn to the foreign marketers. In short, while the entrepreneurial freedom helped the new entrants who threw the existing player out of the, uh, say, uh, cocoon of uh, protection, it means that unlike in the past, profit could no longer be secured by procuring a license and setting up of industrial unit. It had to be earned by playing in the market game with the full measures. Under the licensing system, firms that entered an industry through a license enjoyed market and assured profit. The licensing barrier served as a cocoon of protection under the new uh, dispensation uh, as a licensing barrier were lifted. New players could enter in any given industry and seek a piece of cake. It uh, is meant that uh, existing player had to compete for their share, profit and business. Enterprises had to be content and uh, um, smaller cap capacities as a licenses were just not available for larger capacities. Operating on a smaller scale was a compulsion enjoyed by the regulated economy. MRT provisions too inhibited uh, the setting up of uh, bigger capacities. Thank you.